All right, hi everyone. Welcome to the JBRC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to throw some pottery. It's going to be lots of fun. Uh, I have no idea what I'm throwing yet. I'm just going to go for it, watch, explain what I'm doing, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something and be entertained. Thanks. Turning on the pottery wheel, wetting the tile, wetting the clay. Slapping it down. These tiles need a little bit of suction to uh, get them to stick. All right, I'm gonna get it going pretty fast. Wet my hands, wet the clay. At the moment, it's not perfectly centered. You can see by the wobbling. So I'm gonna take my hands, apply pressure. I always apply with the right hand first because of the spin of the wheel. If I go with my left hand, then my fingers are working against the spin. So right hand first, and then the left hand comes in to apply pressure. So I'm pulling on it, you can see how it's wobbling all over the place. So if I don't pull very hard, it maintains sort of this wobble. So here, I try and hold it steady. And there we go. The tile is slightly loose to the back, and that's why we're getting the ticking. I have to keep adding a bit of water. And you can see I pull the center. Pretty old, it stops ticking. I've got it centered. There you go, you can hear it. Ta-da! Center. Alright, now with the speed I'm going to put my right thumb in. I cup the pot and depress my thumb one knuckle deep, doing my best to keep it center. I'm using the side of my thumb, nearly the whole palm, to make sure everything's still running smooth. And there we go. Now I'm going to cut my speed down to about half, add a bit more water, and I'm going to go down the rest of the depth with my finger. Now I don't go all the way to the bottom, I use my thumb as a gauge to give you an idea of how deep I go. At the moment, I'm about two finger thicknesses down, so I have to go down at least one knuckle, maybe a bit more. So I'm pushing down with my index finger. Now if I draw my hand out, I'm about one finger thickness from the bottom. If I go all the way through, I've made a flower pot. All right. So next, what we need to do is to create a pinch right here at the bottom on the inside and the outside. You can see the indentation at the bottom. I call that the groove. So we need to create a groove on the inside and outside. And this is what we're going to pull up on. So the clay, as it starts off, so what we do when we create our groove is we pinch the inside and the outside and we create a larger mass at the top and a thinner space. So what it looks like in our hands originally with my finger on the inside and thumb on the outside, I use my pincers to squeeze in an area. So I have a large area at the top and I'm going to squeeze that thick area through the space of my fingers. And the clay's going to have nothing else to do but go up. All right, so watch. I grab the piece of clay, I put pressure on it with my pincers, and I draw up. I'm going a little bit slow here for you so you can see it better. And at the top, before taking my hands away, I pinch it down here. My old pottery teacher used to call it the H maneuver. He made it sound quite epic, like it was some sort of fighter jet mode. Anyway, I always remember it, so I keep telling everybody else that. Now, on each pull, I need to do the same sort of three steps where I create my groove, I pinch in at the bottom to get ready for my next pull. Now I've exposed fresh clay, so it's very sticky down here. I need to make sure I wet it and adjust my speed. However, my speed is already adjusted with this wheel, so I don't need to worry about that. I'm going to just start pulling up more. my wheel is going slow, then I need to go slow. We want to do about two rotations before our next sort of pull up. So at a beginning level, you can actually count how many spins and then pull up. I'll show you on my next one. So here, I'm still pinching at the bottom. It's a little hard for me to reach with my thumb, so I'm going to use my index finger to sort of push underneath my what looks to be cut so far. 
go. You can see how much clay I have left at the bottom. All right, I'm going to draw up again. This time my thumb isn't long enough, so I've got my fingers involved too. Now I'm counting one, two, one, two, one, two, and I'm pulling up to match that sort of speed. If the wheel was going faster, I could go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and just draw up much quicker, much more quickly. Ta-da! Small cup. Now I still have enough clay here at the bottom that I could change the shape into anything I want. I could pretty, I could make this into a, a bowl if I wanted to. If I turned it into a plate, I pretty would have screwed it up pretty bad. But uh, right now, it, I can flare out the base of it. Stick my hand in. Push the clay out into my outer fingers. I can let my outer fingers take back over and push the inside in. Ta da! Not sure I'd want to put coffee in it every day. Can't get your hand in it. It's really hard to uh, to clean. Flare that out a little bit more. So pushing out at the bottom. It makes it a little bit more round. Stand it up a bit more. That's sort of a funky shape. Close this off a little bit. I've just collared there where I've sort of choked in the neck a bit and sort of pulled up. Often when you close something back off again, it becomes sort of irregular at the top. I'm just going to cut that off. I have a tool right here for that. So watch this. This is fun. Now what I do is I take the tool and I put it halfway in the clay and get it going all the way around and then I'll push through to my finger. I'll push through so it touches down like that and not as ah, heaven does. You want to just go through and ta-da, we cut the top ring off. And now my pot is smooth in the center of the pot. All right, so the only thing we've got left now is a lip. If it's a drinking cup, you don't want to make your lip too large. You'll end up dribbling all the time down the side of your lips. So we want to make sure that we have, uh, doesn't flare too much. There we go. I should be able to put an interesting handle on that and make something cool. One last, or two last steps, cleaning off the bottom. So with these clay tiles, you really do have to make sure the clay tile is cleaned off. And we need to go underneath the pot, just slightly. I call it undermining. We have to go underneath the pot so it releases from the tile. It also gives us a much cleaner foot, which will less work later to clean up. Finally, the sponge it. So I take my sponge. It's only moderately damp. If it's too dry, then it sticks to the pot. So here I drop my hand in, nice and gentle. And I let the pot do the work. It's already spinning. I don't need to move my pot, my sponge a whole lot. Just take it and swipe up the side. And if I notice more moisture in there, I'll clean up my sponge. Drop it in again. So this is just a fun little warm-up cup. Next, let's do a bowl. fun. That'll look really neat with a handle. All right, next. A 
All right, guys, in a little bit larger clay, we're going to throw a, a bowl for this one. The rounder you can make your, your clay mound, clay ball. The easier it'll be to get it centered, the easier it is to center it, the smoother we pot will become. It all works together to make a better paw. Left the pile, left the clay. Pump it down, hopefully in the middle. There we go. Got it going pretty fast. It's easier to center going fast. And again, my right hand comes on. I'm pushing down a bit and pulling towards me. Okay, you can see I was wobbling all over the place. If I tried to throw a pot like that, I'd have a wobbly pot, or wonky pot, as I call them. on it pretty good. Put in some pressure with my fingers. Now I have a little chunk here at the bottom. So I'm going to use this wood tool. Apply a bit of pressure. Sort of center. This block of clay is a little stiff because I kind of left it out setting up the cameras. Thumb that one. There we go. Once again, I cut my speed down. This time, being a larger mound, I'm going to give it a little more speed than last time. Still going to use my index finger to go down. I'm going to leave a little bit thicker bottom on this one because I want to turn the bottom of it. I'll show you what that is later in the video. All right, at the bottom I've created my groove, my indentation on either side. That's going to allow me to pull up on the larger mass above it and stretch that into sort of our bowl shape. My plan on this one is to go up and then out. Now you can go sort of out and then up, but with these tiles I've been limited to a foot size, how big my base is touching the tile, because it can't go foot cannot go larger than the pile. Alright, let's start pulling up. So my first pull is more about getting in into a cylinder shape. Opening the mouth up a bit so I can get two fingers in. There we go. I create my next group. This should make for a better pot. I do have to do a little bit of recentering. Still a little thick. Nothing I can't handle on this one. There we go. All right. This will make a fun bowl. Now here, using a larger piece of clay, I wrap my index finger around my thumb. All right, call that knuckling up. Here we go. Using our knuckle for pull. I've braced my hands together. I want to keep a thicker rim so when I expand it out, it'll be the size that I want it to be. I want to make sure that the mouth of my bowl stays inward 
make for a stronger bowl that will hold its shape better. So I've just pushed out the bottom a little bit. I'm going to keep doing that until I get somewhat the bowl shape I want. I always start at the bottom in the center and then push out the base. Again, trying to keep my rim in and make a stronger bowl. And I'll flare it out in a minute. That will be the highlight of the, sh the, the show, folks. Highlight of the show right there. Cool. Then we went we're gonna slow it down. Let's take everything nice and easy. That's a fun popcorn bowl. See yourself munching on that, sitting on the couch, watching a good movie. All right, this time I'm gonna sponge it first. center. fashion, set the tool out of my view, leave this one for half an hour 45 minutes I could take a heat gun to it and then like right now it's a little bit wet I could go back to it and put in some more details uh, I could carve into it lots of different things that I could do in an hour or two I could put on a handle two handles on each side make it a little more decorative a little more fun but anyway that's what I've got so far great 
I have one more special treat for you. Uh, just hold on. Thanks. For my next one, <clears throat> I'm going to do this one blindfolded. Now this is going to be a cut for my friend Terry. He's not feeling very well and I thought it would be a a good fun thing to do with you guys and uh, also make him a cool mug. All right. <clears throat> Ready? Here we go. student that's 90% of the way of finding center, I usually blindfold them to help them find the last 10%. Finding center isn't about sight, it's about feel. In your hand, you notice things a little bit more when you're not looking at them, so it really does help to blindfold yourself and just feel the clay. my friend Terry.
Now remember, these plots shrink about 13%. So this will actually be a much smaller model when it's done. All right, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.